I had a good one this morning. Feels so much better. Nice, congratulations. Yes, thank you so very much. I accept that. And it didn't take me that long either. So I am so pleased today is gonna be a good day. Yeah. Yeah. Good day. It's yeah. funny how it can really control your mood. Definitely. Good or good or Marvel not. Ways, Tom Hotlin, and Zach Young all have been living for decades with spinal cord injury. They met here at the University of Michigan Hospital in Ann Arbor to talk about something that doesn't get talked about enough, they believe, and that's poop. And uh, someone mentioned how people only get like one poop a week. And I can't imagine that. No. Know? I can't imagine. But I've heard it many times. It affects your whole system. Yeah. The conversation is important because bowel function is one of the greatest challenges for people living with spinal cord injury. Uh, you know, uh, the 18 years of being in a wheelchair, it's still my least favorite thing to deal with out of all, everything that comes along with the package. A lot of patients or persons with spinal cord injuries will say it's more important for me to have, be able to have bowel function normalized and bladder function than to be able to walk because life would be so much easier for me. I can still be independent. Zach's spinal cord was injured when he was shot in 1997 in an attempted robbery. He remembers the change in his bowel function. Right after my injury, um, I had no more control of it and um, I couldn't tell exactly when I had to go. I, I lost the ability to, you know, go on whenever I needed to. And, um, I've gotten used to it over the time, but, um, but yeah, right at first it was, uh, that was probably one of the biggest surprises of being paralyzed. Tom was also shot during a robbery when he was managing a hotel in 1991. Even though I'm paraplegic, when I went home I was really sick with wounds and infections oh, okay. and so forth. So my wife started, uh, you know, taking care of me right. and she was helping with the bowel program and, mm -hmm. and it just killed our relationship. I can imagine. You know, yeah. we, we ended up being nurse and patient. Yeah. And, and Marva was in a car crash with her family in 1976. She was left paralyzed from the shoulders down. I think the changes that I noticed in bowel function was just the fact that I could not go on my own, that I had to physically insert a suppository. Um, and sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. And there's nothing worse than knowing that you need to have one and not being able to have one no matter what you do. Marva, Tom, and Zach all help out with peer mentoring at the University of Michigan Spinal Cord Injury Model System, which is funded by the National Institute on Disability, Independent Living, and Rehabilitation Research. It's a family member? Yeah, my mom. Yeah, how do you feel about The model that? system conducts research and provides innovative treatments for people like with spinal cord injury. After a spinal cord injury, people so, no longer have control of their bowels. They don't have the sensation to know when their bowels are full. They have decreased mobility or motility of the um, waste product. And they don't have the control to either contract the muscles or relax the muscles so that the stool can come out. I'm not going to have Patty that. Zuba is an uh, occupational therapist uh, here at the model system. She helps no, people with spinal cord injury learn how to manage their bowels. Everyone uh, poops. And when you have a spinal cord injury, it's not easy. It's very complicated in that you can't just go to the bathroom, to have your coffee, and, you know, five minutes you're done. It's a very laborious process, and it involves lots of different um, pieces to make it work effectively, whether it be the timing, the food, the, the nutrition, the hydration, um, the medications, positioning, all that it is interplayed together and that's what makes it complicated. You know, whether or not Ms. Zuba is describing what's known as a bowel sure, program. That's Everything that's, that's needed in order for people with spinal cord injury to gain control over their bowels and have a regular, predictable bowel movement. So in the mornings, I, uh, I try to start my bowel routine after breakfast and after a cup or two of coffee. That seems to help. Zach has a relatively straightforward bowel program that he's able to administer on his own. He's very careful to do it every day at the same time. And then I put in a suppository while I'm sitting in my chair and then uh, usually it takes about 15 to 20 minutes to activate. Um, so I kind of do what I got to do until then and then as soon as uh, I have a little bit of sensation I know when it's going to be too late so I, I jump on the toilet then 
and uh, make sure I have plenty of reading material or my cell phone, and uh, I just sit and wait. <laughs> There are many types of suppositories available. The suppository that Zach uses includes the laxative bisicodal. It stimulates his bowels to contract and move stool down from his colon into his rectum and out of his body. It works most of the time. Sometimes I have to use digital stimulation um, to get my body like relaxed enough to let it out. You know, a lot of times when I'm sitting on the toilet, my body just tenses up and it's, that's, it doesn't do anything. It's like a, like a ketchup bottle. <laughs> when Zach says we'll digital stimulation, he's and, talking uh, about moving a gloved uh, finger yeah, in a circular motion ball. around the entrance to the rectum. A lot of times, um, you know, even when they take the medications, they're on a good diet and whatnot, the stool may move down, but it may get stuck in the rectal vault. And so a lot of times people will need digital stimulation to go into the rectal vault, basically kind of stimulate the muscle to relax and let the stool out. Or sometimes they even have to manually take the stool out of the rectum. All of this takes time. Um, when things are working you know, well, it can still take up to an hour. Is, it's like the more rushed you are and the more you want to hurry through it, the slower it's going to get yep. yes, and the more exactly. problems you're going to have. Exactly. So it's like, I've always found like you just got to give yourself extra, yeah. extra amount of time, a couple extra yeah. hours so you're not yeah. rushed, make yeah. sure nobody needs to use the bathroom. Exactly. And that's when you have it the best. Yeah. You yeah. Know, when I think it, it's probably attributed somewhat to stress. Because when so. you've got an appointment, that's where you're mental. going somewhere, you yeah, get yeah, stressed so out. And that and has so a lot to do with it, I think. In addition to the events and medication surrounding the actual emptying of his bowels, Zach's bowel program also includes eating lots of fruits and vegetables, drinking plenty of water, and getting good exercise. Marva's bowel program has a few more elements. For a normal bowel movement, when I've had enough fluids and had enough fiber, then I just do maybe the suppository and the senna. Uh, it's, it's a natural, you know, uh, herbal um, laxative magic bullet suppository. Uh, these are the prunes, and so what I'll do is if I've had, uh, you know, cheese or some barbecue ribs or something like that, I'll take this because I know that's gonna give me some trouble. This is the granddaddy of them all because this is the citrate magnesium. So if I've really been constipated or feel a little bit impacted, then I'll take this and it goes down through there and loosen things up. And exercise has always been a big part of Marva's life. I think as long as I move, um, push my chair, uh, clean the house, wash the dishes, do the vacuum, all of that is a form of exercise to a certain extent. And then at the same time, too, I was very involved in athletics. I did uh, individual sports competition, plus I played on a basketball team. And it's really amazing that exercise makes you feel good, plus it helps you have a good poop. Both Marva and Zach are able to manage their bowels independently. People with more severe injuries who aren't able to bend and reach and use their hands need a caregiver to help. They have to rely on a caregiver who might be maybe a mother or a spouse. So uh, it puts the patient in a very difficult uh, emotional situation where now you're having some uh, changes in social roles and identity, so the relationship you have with your spouse now might be different because she or he might be someone who is really taking care of you. Dr. Denise Tate heads up the University of Michigan Spinal Cord Injury Model System. Dr. Tate and Tom spent time recently talking about issues with bowel function, like constipation. And you can get constipated for so many reasons, for the meds that you're taking, for not drinking enough, for not eating the right foods, etc. And we always joke about, well, what does it for you? And somebody will say, orange juice. And somebody will say, hot tea. And somebody will say, salad from Olive Garden. <laughs> I mean, it's just, they get their thing and they use it. So constipation is something that, that comes up and, you know, and I deal with. If I don't eat, you know, drink a lot of water and I eat a lot of junk food, I give myself more time. Um, I try to Usually when I'm real constipated that, you know, it, it can, uh, you know, cause me to, you know, call in sick for work or something like that. Because if I don't have a full bowel movement, then I'm, you know, I'm kind of paranoid. I'm a little more paranoid then and I don't know if, you know, something's going to happen later or not. And I'm not always feeling great because of it. At its worst, constipation can cause a bowel obstruction. 
a bowel obstruction is an emergency um, because it can lead to uh, life, a life-threatening issue. Autonomic dysreflexia, which is a severe elevation of blood pressure and a decrease in your heart rate. It is of major concern because, you know, elevated blood pressures and decrease in heart rate can lead to a stroke. The obstruction has to be relieved uh, right away um, with either medications or enemas um, as soon as possible. Autonomic dysreflexia is the body's response to any kind of physical stress, even those that a person with spinal cord injury can't feel, such as shoes that are too tight. And constipation is a common cause of autonomic dysreflexia. Yeah, it's scary that, to think that your poop can actually kill you <laughs> if you don't take care of it. You know, I mean, the autonomic dysflexia, however we pronounce that, um, that could get so severe that you could have a stroke. For about one-third of people with spinal cord injury, fecal incontinence is a major problem, losing control of your bowels and having an accident. And the fear of that can be stressful enough to keep some people isolated at home. I have a young lady uh, who lives in, in Arizona that stayed in the house for a whole year because she had problems with diarrhea. It really affects your quality of life. So uh, a lot of uh, persons with spinal cord injury do feel that uh, they don't have a lot of options. If you go to a store and what something happens when you are in the store, you can't find the restroom right away. What do you do next? Is somebody going to be there to help you? Sometimes they don't have a caregiver. They don't have a family member. So it becomes very difficult and they just feel like it's better not to bother with all this. And they are isolated and then we are concerned about depression because when people are isolated and do not get out of their house, they can't participate in activities, um, they can become much more depressed. The best way to avoid bowel accidents and prevent complications is to stick with a regular consistent bowel program with at the very least three full bowel movements per week. But it can take a while to establish that consistency. It all starts during inpatient rehabilitation. Hi, Josh. Hey, how's it going? Good, how about you? Yeah, good. Uh, Ms. Zuba today. teaches yeah. all the elements of a good bowel program to new patients, like 24-year-old Josh Numerdor, who injured himself when he unknowingly dove into a shallow section of a lake. If you have to do it in bed, yes. If you do it in bed. And that, what's even a better position? If you're sitting up and on, on the toilet. On the commode, yeah. We definitely talk about um, getting their bowel program under control to help motivate them so that they, they feel like a sense of accomplishment and know that, okay, if I do this, then it will work. And, you know, I can go on and do the things that I want to do, go back to work, go to school, hang out with my buddies. Okay. You know, but the big thing is you want to do it the same time every day to have it a good regimen. You want, if, like there's a window. That's yeah. What, that's what I'm asking. Like yes. It should be roughly around the same time. Mm -hmm. If Josh is like most patients, it will take him about six months to settle on a bowel program that works for him with little constipation and few accidents. But he'll need to make small adjustments all along, like more fiber if stools are too loose, more oral laxative if stools are too hard. The process takes patience, and anyone who is not having regular bowel movements should tell their doctor right away. Hi, Dr. Hi, Rodriguez, how are That's you? That's why Marva nice is here to see again. Dr. Yeah, Gianna Rodriguez today. today. Uh, After years of consistency, she's starting to have trouble. But if I, if I don't take them both, then that's when I get like the constipation. Okay. Uh, you know, sometimes even like I say, the little, little balls, you know, where it feels like I'm impacted and I've got to dig out of those balls. So, all right, so you're not really taking the Senna and the Miralax every other day on a regular basis. No, not unless I have, you know, those problems. Okay, so if, you know, if you're taking the Senna and the Miralax mm -hmm. together and you're having good outputs, uh -huh. okay, what prevents you from taking the Senna and the Miralax on a regular basis? The fact that I've taken all of this stuff for so long. Because of aging, your body does change and your gastrointestinal yeah. system does slow down. So for now, we can get you to be more consistent with intake of your medications because they do work. I know you have concerns about, you know, the, the regular intake of medications mm -hmm. and really I think you will be in more trouble or you will have more problems if you don't keep yourself regular. That's what I need to know because 
you know, this works for me, this in the mirror relax. Just like Marva, everyone should talk to their doctor about long-term use of medications, side effects, and drug interactions. Lowering your GI tract so that you don't have problems with your upper GI tract. Yes. For a small percentage of people, their problems with their bowels are so severe that they turn to a surgical solution, a colostomy. A surgeon will divert their colon to the abdominal wall and stool will move from their abdomen into a bag, which they can toss. All right. We'll see you soon. Okay. Bye. We kind of joke that everybody, you know, when people get around in a room yeah. like us, we'll just start talking about Absolutely. pooping w yeah. with, with like no exactly uh, no care no in the world. And exactly. other people are like, what are they talking about? Communication seems to be an answer for many of the challenges exactly. brought on by neurogenic bowels. Right. Talking to partners, mm -hmm. talking to family, talking to professionals. And I yeah. think that we owe all of the newly injured people yeah. that dialogue mm -hmm. because they're going through so many changes. Yeah. And that's so very important. Right. You know, there's mm -hmm. nothing worse than being full of mm -hmm. yeah. crap. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it makes you miserable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You feel crappy. No, I don't it wanna... makes you feel crappy. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that that's a conversation, and I, I do it with all of my peers, especially yeah. those persons who are newly injured. Yeah. Listen, I know you probably don't want to hear about this, you don't want to deal with this but it's just a fact of life. You've yeah. got to make sure that you have yeah. a poop and a good poop. Yeah, you, know? you can't really cut corners with that. When people with spinal cord injury learn how to manage their bowels, they find a kind of freedom. Bowel issues control me as far as my mornings are concerned. Um, but you know, if I can get through that, then throughout the rest of the day, I can, you know, if, if that's, got past me and behind me then the rest of the day is completely open so and uh, and I do you know I do quite a bit I go to work I drive um, you know I've got a lot of friends I, you know I still go out and party <laughs> you know whenever I can believe you me I'm post 40 years I've had some ups I've had some downs I've had some times where I thought I wasn't gonna ever get this thing under control but over the years, those 40 years, I've gone from doing one thing to doing something totally different. What worked back then, my first 10 years, didn't work anymore. So I had to make some changes and had to make an adjustment. But it has allowed me to stay active, to socialize with my friends, to socialize with my families, to take trips. So don't let that bio program stop you from living your life. Learn how to manage it. Talk to your peers, talk to your doctor, and find something that works for you. And then you'll be a happier, healthier person. Spinal cord injury model systems provide coordinated and multidisciplinary care and conduct research to improve care and outcomes for people with spinal cord injury. This video is a product of the Model Systems Knowledge Translation Center and funded by the National Institute on Disability, Independent Living, and Rehabilitation Research. To learn more about the work of these spinal cord injury model systems, please visit msktc.org.